So we looked at the general idea of what cells were, and we looked at the plasma membrane and the cytoplasm. It's time to take a look at what's going on inside these eukaryotic cells, what we call organelles. Uh, organelles sort of sounds like organs, as inside your body you have different organs, and those organs have different functions. Well, organelles are kind of like a cell's organs. They have very specific structure and function. We're going to learn about something called mitochondria. Ribosomes. We already know a lot about ribosomes, so we'll just kind of review that a little bit. The endoplasmic reticulum, which is also fun to say. The Golgi complex. Lysosomes. Peroxisomes. You might recognize part of the word peroxide in peroxisomes. The secretory granules. And the cytoskeleton. So these are the organelles that we're going to take a look at over the next couple of videos. This is an artist's depiction of what a cell might look like if you were to cut it open. It's not this sort of large amount of empty space. You'll notice it's pretty packed with all of these different structures. And the nucleus is right in the center of this thing. As a matter of fact, nucleus means center. So uh, sometimes when you see pictures of cells, it looks like you've got a nucleus and then you've got all this empty space between the nucleus and the membrane, the plasma membrane. But in fact, you don't. You have lots and lots of different membrane-bound organelles. But if you don't stain the cell correctly, you won't see them. So if you want to observe or examine some of these structures, you have to you have to give them some color so that you can actually see them with your eye. Or you look at it with an electron microscope. This is not uh, either of those things. This is just a, like a painting or a, a drawing of what a cell might look like. Okay, So it's probably not exactly to scale, but, uh, but pretty packed. Starting with the mitochondria. Mitochondria are sometimes called the powerhouses of the cell. Um, they are where energy is made. Okay, so you break down glucose. Remember, cells need food, and the only food that your cells can use is glucose. So you need to eat something that is either made of glucose or contains glucose. Glucose is a very simple sugar, and carbohydrates, especially complex carbohydrates, are made of lots of glucose molecules or similar molecules that can be easily converted into glucose. Your cells can only use glucose for, for fuel, for energy. And there's a process by which uh, the cell will start to break down glucose. There's, there's two steps, actually. One is called glycolysis, and then the rest is called um, the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. Uh, but the important thing is, is that in the process of breaking down glucose, uh, you're essentially doing like combustion of glucose, but in a very controlled way. And you're producing waste products, carbon dioxide and water, and you breathe out the carbon dioxide. But you're also producing a lot of a molecule called ATP. And ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it is the energy molecule of the cell. Okay? It's, it's how energy gets from one place to another in the cell. And so breaking down glucose makes a tremendous amount of ATP if you do it inside a mitochondria. Okay, Mitochondria are made mostly of protein inside a membrane, uh, but there are some lipid pieces and there's some DNA and RNA in mitochondria. As a matter of fact, one of the most interesting discoveries of the 20th century in terms of cells was that mitochondria have their own DNA. Now that suggests that maybe at one point in our very, very, very far long ago history, the mitochondria was maybe its own simple one-celled organism that was somehow absorbed by a larger cell. And instead of digested, the larger cell took advantage of the mitochondria's ability to make lots and lots of energy and just kind of hung on to it. The other thing that's interesting about mitochondrial DNA is that it's maternal DNA. Your DNA in all of your cells in the nucleus comes half from mom, half from dad. That's how our reproduction works. But your mitochondrial DNA, 
only comes from mother. Okay, there is no none of your father's mito, DNA in, in your mitochondria. If you know anything about fertilization and how sexual reproduction works, uh, the genetic material is carried from the father by the sperm, which is really just a carrying mechanism with a little tail that swims it along. There's not much else in there but DNA. And eventually it meets the ovum or egg cell, which is essentially a full cell. Well, the egg cell comes from your mother and it contains all the mitochondria already. So they're only going to be your mom's DNA in that mitochondria. But it's interesting because you can trace somebody's maternal lineage through their mitochondria. Uh, mitochondria are generally either spherical or football shaped. This is a drawing. This is not a, photo a photograph. It's a drawing with cutaway of what a mitochondria might look like. Uh, you'll see this sort of folded membrane on the inside with these little, uh, little round dots. Uh, those dots are enzymes that are involved in the production of ATP, and that membrane is folded um, over and over again inside. The, the inner membrane is where all the biochemical reactions occur, and it's folded and folded and folded and folded, so you can get a tremendously large surface area into a very, very small space by folding it up like that. And the folds are called cristae. So the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle, um, fatty acid oxidation, all of that requires enzymes and those enzymes are found inside the mitochondria. Here's an actual electron micrograph. It's been colored, um, but this is a mitochondrion in a human heart cell. You would expect a heart cell to c contain quite a few mitochondria because mitochondria produce energy. And a heart cell needs to continually beat. It needs a lot of energy just to keep your heart going. So you'd probably find quite a few mitochondria in human heart cells or in any heart cells. The next organelle we'll look at is ribosomes. And we've studied ribosomes, so we'll quickly just review. Remember, it's made of ribosomal RNA, about 80 different proteins kind of holding things together. The ribosomal RNA is made in the nucleolus, which is in the middle of the nucleus. It's where all the DNA sort of is packed in there. Um, the ribosome, ribosomal subunits, remember there are two, the large and the small one, and they're assembled, they're put together, the subunits, in the nucleolus, and then they come out into the cytoplasm. Okay? Uh, ribosomes are where proteins are made. We already know how that happens. We've studied that already. Uh, some of them are free-floating in the cytoplasm. In prokaryotes, that's all they are, is free-floating in the cytoplasm. But in eukaryotes, uh, some, a lot of our ribosomes are actually stuck on the endoplasmic reticulum, which is, we'll, we'll talk about in just a minute. This is taken from a liver cell. A human liver cell uh, would need to produce a tremendous amount of enzymes because the job of the liver is to detoxify your blood. You need enzymes for that. So you would want your liver cells to have a lot of ribosomes. These little dots, red dots, are ribosomes. Okay? The endoplasmic reticulum is this folded three-dimensional maze of connecting and branching channels made, up, made by continuous membrane. It's, it's, it's one long, big piece of membrane that's folded and branches into different uh, channels. And, and it's where... Uh, a lot of our protein synthesis happens. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There's rough endoplasmic reticulum, and it's called rough because it looks like it has a rough texture. The reason it looks like it has a rough texture is because it has ribosomes stuck in it. And then there's smooth endoplasmic reticulum that has no ribosomes on it at all. It's just membrane. Okay. Anytime you have a cell that makes a lot of protein, you're going to have a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is where you make new membrane. So rough ER, endoplasmic reticulum, is where you make proteins and then separate them out and package, start to package them up to get them where they need to go. Okay? Uh, you can modify proteins to make uh, li uh, lipoproteins or glycoproteins. A lot of the modification of proteins is done in the endoplasmic reticulum. And if you need to make new membrane, 
you make it in the smooth endoplasm reticulum. So phospholipids are made in there as well to make new membrane. Okay, smooth ER is also used for steroid synthesis, uh, detoxification of substances in the liver, and phospholipid or new membrane synthesis. The green lines here are the endoplasmic reticulum. And is this rough or smooth ER? Right, it's rough because those little red dots are the ribosomes that are all stuck on there. So human liver cell, we want lots and lots of proteins made. You're going to have a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi complex is also sometimes called the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. It looks like a stack of pancakes. And its job is to package proteins so they can get out of the cell. You have to package them up. So some cells make lots and lots of proteins that need to get out, like liver cells, for example. Uh, we need to dump those enzymes into the blood to help detoxify it. Uh, the Golgi complex also adds directions so that the proteins will know where to go. Okay, uh, It's a one-way factory. They enter through one side, which is called a cisface, and they come out the other side, the transface. Okay. Uh, when you make proteins in the endoplasmic reticulum, they come off of the endoplasmic reticulum surrounded by membrane, which are called vesicles, these little membrane-bound sacs. They're transported to the Golgi body. They fuse with the cis face of the Golgi body. They dump their contents, the proteins, into the Golgi complex where they're modified, packaged, and they come out the other side, again, bound up in vesicles. Okay, So you can kind of see that here. Um, we have on the left side, we have vesicles going in, and on the right side, we have them coming out of the Golgi complex. And those vesicles, the little round green circles, uh, would head out to the outside of the cell and, and dump their contents outside the cell. 